uh, you've used the term global jihadist movement and thus identified the global jihadist movement as the focus of America's fight against terrorism. Isn't it a fact that the global jihadist movement is very closely linked to the teachings of Wahhabism? Um, yes yeah, or no? Yeah, I would say they draw inspiration in a, in a perverted sense, but yes, I would say, and Robert may want to elaborate on that, and, but and the, two, the two big jih global jihadists are Al-Qaeda and ISIL. And they draw their inspiration from the Wahhabi uh, strain of Islam, isn't that correct? Yes. And uh, the Wahhabism is a 18th century offshoot of Sunni Islam which began in the land uh, that has come to be known as Saudi Arabia, isn't that correct? Yes. And Wahhabism seeks to purify Islam by getting rid of a number of human behaviors and practices that it considers to be sins against uh, uh, Allah, correct? Uh, correct. And uh, Wahhabism is a strict, fundamentalist, highly intolerant strain of Islam. Correct? Yeah. Correct? And uh, now, isn't it a fact that the Saudi ruling monarchy derives its legitimacy by reliance on the ideology of Wahhabism? Mm. You wanna? The Saudis are riding a tiger. The, the Saudis are riding a tiger. The Saud uh, so if you will answer you know, what the I'm question, saying, what I'm saying, don't, isn't it a fact? No, it's a, I wouldn't put it that way. I would say it's not a fact that they depend solely on Wahhabism for their legitimacy. They derive the legitimacy from a variety of things. One of them is Wahhabism, but it is not the only one. Well. Is it fair to say that Wahhabism is the state-sponsored religion of Saudi Arabia? Yes. The Saudi government sanctions Wahhabi imams in their major mosques. Well, as a matter of fact, the Saudi monarchy promotes Wahhabism through official state-sponsored mosques and through religious schools known as madrasas all over the world. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes. And isn't it true that the Saudi government promotes Wahhabism through, throughout the world uh, based on uh, its oil and gas revenue? Absolutely. The government's revenues, directly or indirectly, help the proselytizing that you mentioned. And uh, the Wahhabism ideology lines up with the ideology of ISIL. Isn't that correct? I would say no. For example, the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia, the official ones, do not kill Shia. They persecute them. They do not have equal rights. They do not have equal rights, but they don't kill them. However, a Shia in Mosul or a Shia in Raqqa is liable to be killed. Well, yeah, I'm, but it's true, though, that the ideology of ISIL lines up with Wahhabism. I would say it's, kind of, it's a starting point, and then the Islamic State has taken it several steps farther. Yes. And uh, is it fair to say that Saudi support for the teachings of Wahhabism create fertile ground for ISIL recruitment efforts? I think Saudi promotion of Wahhabism is absolutely a problem in terms of Islamic State recruitment. And so we will be unable to defeat the global jihadist movement which is based on largely Wahhabism, which is a state-sponsored religion of Saudi Arabia, without somehow enlisting the support of the Saudi royal family in 
withdrawing its financial support for Wahhabism. Is that a fair assessment? So in this, in, in, in the discussion we had earlier about dealing with radicalization in the first place, that's what, this is what you're talking about, right? I think Saudi Arabia is, is a center of where that needs to take place. So there needs to be a discussion with the Saudis about their support for Wahhabism and, and how it should be treated and how they should think about it. So absolutely right. What was the latest amount of arms that we sold to Saudi Arabia, the latest shipment? I think it was, what, $100 million worth of uh, uh, arms? Well, their support for the uh, campaign in Yemen, but the, the arms sales that occur periodically are in the billions of dollars. Thank you, and I yield back. The uh, deal with Saudi Arabia, and uh, I, I couldn't get an answer on uh, specifically how we were monitoring their support, their continued support of the exportation of Wahhabism, Salafism, and, and, and the terror that, that goes along with that fundamentalist view of, of Islam around the globe. Do you know of any metrics that the department is following to support their claim that they are working on that? How are we gauging that? How are we going to determine whether they're following along with that portion of the agreement? Well, one of the outcomes of the President's summit in Riyadh was the creation of the center to, uh, to counter extreme Muslim messaging with Saudi Arabia. This, there's, this center now exists. It was inaugurated while we were there. Uh, the center has a number of elements to attack uh, extremism around the world. One of the elements that we are visiting with them about, and they have already taken step, the Saudis, is to, uh, is to publish new textbooks that go into the schools that are in the mosque around the world. These textbooks are to replace textbooks that are out there today that do advocate extreme Wahhabism viewpoints around the justification for violence. We've asked that they not just publish the new textbooks, we've asked that they retrieve the existing textbooks so we get those back. That's just one example. This center is going to have a very broad range from social media to broadcast to how young imams are trained in the theological centers. And we are working with them today with the establishment of the new center. What are the measures that we will hold ourselves accountable to? That is one of the charges that the State Department is working with the Saudis and others as we bring this center up to an operating level. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Time's expired. You. Now you go to Saudi Arabia, where I just came back, a monumental, epic trip, because I said you cannot continue to fund terrorism. You cannot continue to fund terrorism. And the king of Saudi Arabia, who is really become just, he's a very special man. I mean that. He is taking it to heart. And now they're fighting with other countries that have been funding terrorism. And I think we had a huge impact. We will see. But I think we had a tremendous impact. We cannot let these incredibly rich nations fund radical Islamic terror or terrorism of any kind. We cannot let it happen. Cannot let it happen. It was one of the great two days of my life, and I'm sure a lot of you watched it on television. Fifty-four Muslim nations coming together, some immensely powerful wealthy nations, and everybody in that room was unified, and the ones that weren't, they're trying to get them to be unified and to do the right thing. I think it could have a tremendous impact. But not only that, I said, for me to go, I'm only going, we had to negotiate, if you spend billions of dollars, billions, on having things manufactured in our country with our jobs and our workers for your country. And hundreds of billions of dollars were spent and given to American companies who are going to make American products. 
and send those products over to the wealthy countries of the Middle East. I mean hundreds of billions of dollars. And people haven't talked about that, but to me that was very important, because we want those jobs. We want those jobs. So they're making airplanes, they're making all sorts of things, hundreds of billions of dollars, and it's going back, and I'm very proud of that. That's something people don't talk about, because the real purpose of my being there was to make sure these countries do not fund terror any longer.